Well, good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. And thank you to Trond and to the ILP for organizing um, such a dynamic and exciting event. I'm going to um, step back for a minute. And, uh, and Kristen did a great job of showing sort of a national picture of what's going on in terms of advanced manufacturing technologies, et cetera. I'm going to step back from the technologies and talk more about systems of innovation, and specifically the innovation system here in Massachusetts. As Kristen um, mentioned, we did this major report called Production in the Innovation Economy just a few years ago. 25 years ago, MIT had done this uh, book called Make, uh, Made in America. Some of you may be familiar with it. It was an MIT bestseller which I find always interesting. Uh, but it really did shake up the way that people in the country were thinking about manufacturing and specifically productivity in the US. We were, at that time, being very much challenged by Japan. Uh, 25 years later, we took on the question of innovation. Productivity, I think the US has really figured out. Innovation is the next piece. And after we did this work, uh, the state of Massachusetts and some of the leadership there uh, in manufacturing came to MIT and said, well, this is very interesting work, but what does it mean for this region? So I'm just going to walk through a little bit of our high-level findings, and particularly with all of you, I think the, the point of, um, and the beauty of this meeting today is that, in fact, we're here together because of an innovation system that's very vibrant here in Massachusetts. So I'm going to uh, raise a few points here. I look forward to future conversation because one of our major areas of uh, focus and, uh, and recommendations was around the startup community. So. Uh, first, let me just talk briefly about the changing landscape that we saw when we went out and talked to companies uh, in this region. Um, first, we have holes in our industrial, uh, industrial commons. This was one of the major findings of the Pi report, which is to say that we used to have a, a very vibrant investment in a lot of our public goods and our uh, important parts or inputs, if you will, to our uh, startups, to our companies, to our workforce. This was happening through large, vertically integrated companies, the DuPonts and the GMs of the world, who would take uh, early stage apprenticeships, who would take early stage technologies, they would invest the R&D, would make all of the sort of long-term um, technolog technological developments within their four walls. That clearly has changed. We had a lot of outsourcing, we've had offshoring, we've had a fragmented supply chain. All of that has left certain holes in our industrial commons. A challenge for our small and medium-sized manufacturers, a challenge for our workforce development, a challenge for technology to develop and scale. So the question is, how do we address that? And in fact, in the country, the, the startup community, the venture community are very important ways in which we've addressed some of these questions. Uh, next, large manufacturers, our OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, are changing dramatically. In the last five to ten years, they have, have had to really rethink how they organize themselves in a global and competitive environment. And we see this around the ways in which they're integrating both their supply chain management and their engineering so that they're getting early stage the design and design for manufacturing happening really early stage and in, in relationship to their supply chain. They're consolidating their supply chain organization. It used to be you'd have a supply chain across six different business units. They'd all have a different supply chain process. Now that's changed. Uh, consolidation overall in their supply chain. More collaboration with their suppliers, both strategic and commodity. A whole host of ways in which the large OEMs who drive so much innovation are changing the way they think about this. Third, uh, an increasingly competitive landscape. I don't think I need to go into any detail here, but it's not only that we have uh, countries and regions around the world who are becoming quite, um, quite advanced in their capabilities, but also we have billions of dollars being spent by governments um, pr primarily as well as others into new technologies. And, that's, and we also have new quid quid pro quos, offsets for those who want to do business in certain countries, what you have to invest. All of that changing the landscape for, uh, for companies. And then new game-changing manufacturing technologies, as Kristen uh, just alluded to. Uh, the idea that textile, textiles are dead in, in you know, New England, and the fact that textiles could actually come back is just a fascinating and kind of exciting time for, uh, for this area. So let me just briefly sort of hit on some of our um, our overall findings. First of all, in terms of this region, the advanced manufacturing capabilities that support a diverse set of regionally important industry clusters. So um, we all are aware of the biotech cluster and how that is sort of uh, globally competitive here in this region. But what we don't see are the underlying capabilities, I think, in terms of advanced manufacturing that support biotech, aerospace defense, 
um, biopharma, a whole host of other different industries that sort of drive this economy and are underpinning all of it. So robotics, for example, is one area where we see strengths and important uh, opportunities. There could be photonics. It could be a whole host of other types of capabilities, that uh, advanced materials as well, that are underlying all of our capabilities uh, across these important clusters. And so that's something that is important for us to understand. Um, secondly, what do, what do the companies here compete on when it comes to advanced manufacturing? Well, no surprise, talent, quality, and innovation. We are doing small batch, highly responsive quality production here. A lot of companies come to Massachusetts, locate in Massachusetts, to do their new product introduction, their NPI work. Uh, we don't obviously, for large commercial scale production, that's not necessarily what we have a strength for. Our labor costs are are higher, et cetera. But for that early stage and particularly niche production, where a lot of, we see a lot of industries, if you think about biopharma, you think about textiles, actually you see opportunities in this region, um, in this area. And when we talk to the large companies, they would say, well, we have tremendous um, universities, so the R&D is very strong. We have very strong supplier network. And our suppliers have rapid response, high quality kind of response that we, we need today. We have a very dynamic uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem where we also are uh, getting new ideas and, uh, and learning. So all of these things fall into kind of categories as to why we manufacture at all in New England and in Massachusetts. Third, manufacturing intermediaries. This is a point that I think broadly, I'm not, we don't think about this individually in your company and in your uh, activities, you may not think about it individually, but collectively, as we think about how do we move forward an advanced manufacturing agenda, um, what we have historically done here and elsewhere is we have point solutions. We're going to help that company uh, with this lean training. We're going to help that community college figure out a uh, workforce training program. We're going to provide that grant for certification. It's all this sort of point solution to how we help move forward companies and institutions. We need to think on a more systems uh, level, and that was sort of what this work was all about. So let me just talk about the, uh, the system, so to speak, uh, in these four different pieces that we saw. This is about, we were really interested in what are the knowledge flows? Who's driving knowledge? How does innovation and, and knowledge creation happen in a regional economy? Thank you. Um, so first we have the SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises who are a very strong supplier base. About 90%, 95% of all manufacturers in this state have under 100 employees. That's, that's the reality. Um, OEMs, I guess, as I mentioned, the original equipment manufacturers, the startup community, which is all of uh, many of you here, and then the universities. That these are the four core parts of our innovation system. There are other parts um, that feed into this, but that we see those as, the, as sort of the links. And if we look at how they're connected, um, sorry, let me, um, we see, I, what I'm going to show is just sort of flows and strengths of links. And this is sort of what we wanted to start to think about. How do we strengthen the links between these? Between OEMs and SMEs, very strong innovation flows from the OEMs into the SMEs. Very weak relationship between the SMEs and the OEMs, relatively speaking, on the knowledge flow. OEMs to universities, again, very strong bilateral part of, um, participation that we see in terms of, you know, at UMass Lowell, the Raytheon Center that's opened up. There's a whole host of ways that large companies are working with our universities. OEMs and startups, clearly the startups driving a lot of innovation for OEMs. Universities to SMEs, very weak, relatively hard to have an interaction between SMEs and our university system, but obviously a huge source of innovation coming from the universities out to the startups. And then interestingly for us, this, this link between startups and SMEs, what do we know? How do the startups, many of you involved in technologies, very um, you know, advanced in many ways, but maybe not so, uh, no, not so versed in the manufacturing processes, how could we link in our system itself the capabilities in our supply chains here and our suppliers to the startup community? So we came out with a whole a host of recommendations. I'll walk through them. But where we were trying to understand how do we strengthen the links of all of these. The OEMs, no question, the strongest link uh, or the strongest drivers of innovation in our ecosystem. They are the window onto R&D. They understand global trends. They know what we need in five to 10 years. They see the technology um, possibilities. How, do the, how does what they know permeate and translate into this regional ecosystem? Um, startups as well, very knowledgeable, but how well are, there, are they connected to these other areas, to the OEMs who can help on the important scale-up process, 
Tristan made mention before of the work I'd done on scale up. What we see is a process in which for those companies involved in production related technologies, an ability to find the sort of financing and find their support in that first perhaps eight to 10, even eight, nine years, which is sort of remarkable to begin with. But when they hit 10, year 10 or 11 or 12, the venture community is really not interested in sticking around that long. We have to find other ways in which to get them to the next hurdle, usually to commercial production process. Um, and then universities. We have a great, universities are working on important, important work, but they're often working in bilateral relationships with, one with th themselves, with one company. And I think the NMI process is really trying to open that up. So just briefly to show you kind of what we, where we came out on recommendations, we uh, talked about an advanced manufacturing strategy for this region, uh, which talks about consortium-based work, particularly bi building on this NMI, NMI uh, model. We've talked about increasing collaborations with our OEMs. If you think about, we've got uh, Raytheon, Bose, Gillette, Medtronics, uh, you name it. We've got a whole list of companies here. None of them really work together or talk together. They, they stay in, within their supply chain and within their work independently. To what extent can we actually bring them together around important technological questions? So uh, how, what can we do in terms of their work with suppliers? What can we do in terms of them highlighting where we see great uh, small manufacturers? Increasing the technological and managerial support for SMEs. One of the biggest challenges, I think, is how do we get all of this new technology into the smaller and medium-sized companies? And what can we do to do, uh, to do that? And then finally, for all of you, how do we connect the startups to the innovation system so that it helps them with scale up, particularly with scale up in partnership with the OEMs, as well as the suppliers um, who can help them with making their prototyping? I'll stop there and look forward to questions later. Thank you. <laughs>